Officially, welcome to Solidarity um, Podcast. This is the um, the ERC's podcast. It's our very first time, um, so bear with us. But we're really excited. Um, we're really excited with um, the conversations that we're going to have, which is on the Undocu community at uh, UC Santa Cruz. Um, and so we have guests um, from the Cantu Queer Center and the um, Undocumented Student Services. Um, just as a note, um, the purpose of this podcast is to feature organizations on the campus um, that are also the resource centers, but also like student organizations and groups. Um, and the topics and conversations that are going to be happening during this call, like, especially if their political opinions are not that of like, the ERCs, um, but um, they're that of the students, and we wanted to give them um, the platform um, so they don't necessarily, like, reflect the views of the resource centers. Yeah. Um, I guess I'll... Um, yeah, thanks for having us. Um, I'm really excited for this. I know we had talked about it. I didn't think it was going to happen so soon, but here we are. And I'm glad we get to kick it off with this because this was maybe the last event that um, I was part of with the camp too before all the, all the things that, you know, happened that kind of like separated us from like the community and stuff. So, um, yeah. Nice. Okay. Um, we can go ahead and introduce ourselves and then just um, we'll have the community agreements um, like sort of broadcasted or um, shared on the screen. Um, so I'm MK. Um, I work at the ERC front desk um, when it is a physical front desk. <laughs> um, I'm a fourth year environmental studies major. Um, Mel, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, my name's Mel. I also work at the front desk. Um, I'm also a fourth year, but I'm studying politics and film. Um, yeah, and I help run the podcast with MK. And then we have two guests on the show, Adan and Bree. Um, anyone can go first. Adan, you can go first. Yeah. Okay. Um, hi, I'm Adan. Um, I use he, him. Uh, I'm a intern at the Cantu. I've been interning there f this year, last year, and then I'll probably be interning there next year. So uh, for anyone who's logged in, hey. <laughs> um, my major is anthropology, and yeah, that's me. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Bree, they, them pronouns. Um, I'm one of the undocumented student services interns. Um, it's my first year and my last year working there. Um, but it won't be the last that I'll be here because I'm a third year, so I still have another year. Um, so if you still have any questions, I'm happy to help. Um, I'm majoring in legal studies and minoring in education. Oh, thank you. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Um, really excited. It's, it's uh, as sort of a done mentioned, like, this podcast has also been done, like, accumulation of, like, last quarter, too. Um, so for today's topic um, on the podcast, we're going to have, uh, we're going to be talking about the undocu queer community, or specifically talking about, like, the intersections of queerness, transness, and documentation. Um, while being like a student at UC Santa Cruz or being a part of that community. Um, and then uh, we have the community agreements that are posted here. Um, I guess here. <laughs> it's the one mic. So I think we're all like Zoom University. Um, and then, as I said, Mel's the host. So if you have any questions or concerns, please let them know. Um, we'll have time for questions at the end. Um, take care of yourself. You need to go to the restroom. Please do that, etc. Um, and I think most importantly, like 
all of us um, come from like different perspectives and we're not trying to claim that we are like the sole representatives of like the queer and docu and or trans community. Um, we're definitely not trying to make universal blanket statements. Um, so we do have like our experiences and we will share the experiences of other folks, but we're also aware that that's not the totality of it. Um, so yeah. <laughs> um, is there anything else that y'all would like to add? If not, we're gonna dive into our discussion. I'm ready. <laughs> cool, Zoom calls are weird. <laughs> okay. Um, so then as you mentioned beforehand, there is event, an event last quarter that was a collaborative event um, that was on like the Undocu um, queer community and I, or um, yeah, undocu, um, queer undocu queer community. And um, I wanted to ask y'all like, what were sort of like the conversations leading up to the creation of this event? Um, sort of like, why did you think it was necessary um, for these um, sort of two like identities or intersections to be talked about together? Yeah, for sure. So um, at least from my side of things at the Cantu, um, we, we, well, my position is like to engage uh, the community, the campus community. Um, at first I was feeling like I was doing a little bit of cheerleading for like Merrill students and like, you know, younger white queers. And I was just kind of like, mm, like it's not my vibe. Like I'm trying to have like, there's folks I know from different intersections that would be really relevant in the conversations we're having. Um, one of those communities was the Andaki queer community. So, um, and then thinking about like the Stonewall speaker series and who our speaker was gonna be, which was um, Genesis Gutierrez, um, who is um, an undocumented uh, trans Latina um, who does activism with, um, what is it? La Familia Trans Queer Liberation. I believe that's what they're called. Um, yeah, we were inviting her, um, but at the same time, I was like, well, it doesn't feel right that like, you know, we don't have any type of real like um, coalition or something with the, um, undocum the undocumented community here. Um, yeah, so that's where that kind of came on about. And uh, we also wanted to like, invite undocumented student services to collab with us. So it just felt right that, um, you know, we kind of addressed that intersection. And yeah, I was happy to like take the lead on that. And then I was in contact with Brie and Brie was super on board, like as soon as I hit them up. So that was really cool. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think that um, that's really your perspective to that yeah um so i mean yeah um undocumented student services has like a history of being really like just catering to one specific group uh whether it was like cis straight like undocumented people or you know, like just center around Latinx, which is a later conversation. Um, um, so yeah, and also we had had like a lot of feedback, like I was going over the feedback from previous years and a lot of it was like, well, there isn't a lot of representation and like the bunch of different intersectionalities that there is. Um, so my, my, uh, my coworkers, my the other interns, like we, a lot of us are are queer. Like for the first time, it was like the first like little cohort that was like predominantly queer. So we were like, hey, <laughs> um, so that's and 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 it was also around the time where like Adan had emailed me because I had already planned to email the Cantu, and to be very specific, I was gonna email Adan because I knew like he worked there. So I was like, <laughs> um, so everything just kind of like worked out. Um, it was meant to be, it was meant to happen. There was for sure 
like it was something that was very needed in the community. Okay. Yeah, I didn't even know that that you were about to yeah. that you had planned to like already reach out to the Cantu, but that's yeah. cool. Yeah. That's um. So yeah, the thing was like a listening session. So just mm -hmm. to get more detail about it, um, like the Cantu had done it before with certain on campus student orgs, um, and other RCs, um. So we kind of already had a template for how that was gonna look, but um, yeah, we kind of made it just more casual, less professional, less like we demand answers from you. Cause like, that's how it seemed at first. Like, okay, the Cantu is gonna facilitate a listening session. Um, but I was like, nah, let's just have it be more of a conversation. Let's see where the group goes with it. Um, let's see like how everyone's feeling, what they wanna do, you know? So we kind of just had questions that were kind of set up and we were like, these are the things we kind of want to talk about that like go on between these two communities or that we know that people experience between these two communities. So we were like, how could we like bring these to the surface and like, you know, talk about it and like see what we could do. Like nobody has answers, but we could at least bring it into the conversation, you know? Yeah. And definitely like from the event, like you can just feel it, how it was something like, that needed to happen like it was a conversation that I feel like had been just neglected for a minute um so I don't know just to me it felt very like healing to like see that yeah yeah that's that's so cute I feel like I like how y'all didn't know like each other's side <laughs> of it I think what's what really stands out to me when y'all talk about that it's like it, it's sort of like puzzle pieces like fell in together um, with this. Um, and that's like really, really great in the sense that um, like it's not forced, like it's a thing that came from that community that folks were like, yeah, let's do that. And I think that really sort of influences like with any like event planning or anything, community building, like that really influences like the vibe of the event. Um, so that's really cool. I'm, I'm glad that it, it like worked out so organically that way. Um, there are some things um, that folks mentioned. Sorry, my screen got really tiny. Um, there are some things that folks mentioned um, where y'all were talking about like, oh, this was like sort of missing in the narrative. So for Adan, you mentioned like, oh, with the, with the queer stuff, like it was sort of like a predominantly white um, kind of narrative. And with Brie, you're sort of like, oh, it was like a predominantly like straight people like <laughs> narrative, but, um, uh, but y'all wanted to like bridge those things together. So I think like a question for y'all are like, sort of what are often like the missing pieces? Um, when talking about like the undocu community or the LGBTQ um, community. Um, Bri, you sort of mentioned like, sometimes undocumented is seen as like a Latinx thing too. Um, so like, I wanna hear y'all's perspectives are like, what are oftentimes like predominant narratives um, and why was this event like important to uh, like sort of address those like the problematic <laughs> narratives. Well, yeah, like like you mentioned, like there is the heavy stigma that like undocumentedness is only a Latinx issue when it's not, obviously. But a lot of the narratives seem to be like super directed towards that specific community. Um, yeah, I think honestly, if I'm being real, child, like my anthropo my anthropology side of me is like that's because we're in California, you know. Yeah. So it's like that's nothing we can't help. You go to the East Coast or you go to the Midwest, you're probably gonna have a lot of the undocu folks from different parts of the world, you know, or like that's where their communities are. So, but it's true, like you have to make the visibility for everybody. Mm -hmm. That's the yeah. same, like. Um, you know, in queer spaces, like a big thing when I first started the Cantu was the cutie pog thing. I know that shout out Tracy. Um, she's actually 
she was a pro, t- pro staff. She's working at UCSF now. Um, but one of her things, I know that she had a really big emphasis on the cutie pop community. And then upon leaving, making it more like specific to QT BIPOC, which is Black Indigenous POC. So Tracy has always been really like inspirational with that type of work. That's like, yeah, like I'm queer, but like there's communities within being queer, not to like, like we don't all have to be one big like queer community, like there's smaller queer communities. Like, and we could, um, you know, and like the more, the more like privileged ones and the more like, you know, people with more access to like visibility and stuff do have the responsibility of making those communities more visible for the rest of us. So yeah, that's kind of like been something that I've been trying to like um, do because of Tracy and like her work and stuff. So. That's so cute, I know. Uh, shout out to Tracy. <laughs> we miss you. Um, I think when y'all mention like there are certain, there's sort of like these subset of communities. Um, it sort of reminds me of like, for example, when creating this event, um, there is like a really intentional emphasis on queerness and transness. Because I think like a lot of times like LGBTQ or queerness um homogenizes um and similar to like poc or like like an indigenous or black um experience like it's it's not trying to like antagonize like it's not trying to be like we are not a part but it's trying to signify that there's a really specific experience that comes out of that um so yeah, that I, I feel y'all on that. Like there's like a particular intention, um, and it's to really um, problematize like the popular narratives of each of the communities. Um, but but I think in a way that because it's coming from the community, it's like a call in. So there's not that intention of like antagonizing like. Um, yeah, like like a cancel culture <laughs> kind of thing, but like genuinely like, um, yeah, like why? And and I think when doing that, when calling in, like, um, like it makes folks realize like, oh, like there are subsets um, within like these communities and that they do exist. Um, and it sort of, um, it sort of relates to like, I guess like an, a next question I want to ask y'all about, which is like visibility. Um, and um, I, I know when I was talking about y'all with y'all earlier, um, brainstorming, there was sort of this idea of like coming out twice. <laughs> um, so what, what do you, what are y'all like, why was that like a term that was like float around like coming out twice? Like, why is that specific to like the undocu queer community? Um, I mean, I, I guess I can share, I can start sharing, um, so just like, I don't know, well, like having, being, I mean, having to be, <laughs> being queer, like. I had to be queer, so I had yeah, to be queer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't make the rules, um, <laughs> um, just like, yeah, like, you already had to, like, you have to come out like to a XYC person. I don't know, it's not mandatory, but like, you know, it's like an essential part of like who you are. And I mean, and so is being undocumented because like, it like determines a lot of like what you can, can't do or like, yeah. So I know, I know from like personal experience, like in high school, I was like also really out person like everybody knew I was queer um but like not everyone knew I was undocumented um and that conversation like came out (laughs) uh when applying to college because I was like they were asking me for like a social security and I was like what the fuck is that (laughs) 
<laughs> and so like that's when all of that came out and then I started getting all these things where like oh like you don't look undocumented and I was like what does that even mean how do you look undocumented it's like <laughs> it like makes me like put together like you know how what it like also like the stigmas that there is like what a queer person is supposed to look like Mm -hmm. or a trans person is supposed to look like so it's like I don't know just like stick stigmas that like society kind of like enforces or just pushes yeah so that's that's what coming out twice means to me (laughs) I feel like sometimes too like um it's like I feel like coming out with your status is more uh, like unexpected for some people too like sometimes you got to do it when you don't even like you know you got to do it to like state things or like legal things like you're not telling your friends and I feel like even then like it's something that's not so celebrated as much as like being queer like when you come out to your friends not necessarily your family because family is weird but when you come out to your friends it's like oh hell yeah like or when you tell them you know i'm using new pronouns it's like oh hell yeah but um you know i wish that there was more more like solidarity there and i think that's the work that we need to do is like when someone tells you they're undocumented you know, it's not something that I think that you should feel bad for them or like anything like that or think of them as like, wait, how are you undocumented? Like you don't like, like apologize. Yeah. Like, there's I'm like, so sorry. <laughs> right. Like I'm sure it does suck, but that's their that's their story to be like, it sucks. Not like you to be like, oh that sucks, you know? Like unless there's hella shit going on like in that time. Like if you're at a protest, you're like, oh wait then we should go that way then you know what I mean (laughs) right (laughs) it's yeah um but yeah I think um fuck what was I gonna say I forgot let me keep going sorry yeah like I yeah that's that's a good point like Mm. I don't know that just kind of like drew my train of thought to like like the 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 different responses that there is like I'm pretty sure like people don't know how what to say or do they're like oh <laughs> um, <laughs> I guess it's like learning how to navigate those conversations and like make sure that the the environment space is comfortable enough for people and obviously like don't put pressure on people to be like well like what's your status like and stuff like that so yeah I don't know it takes time it's definitely a process <laughs> I think that that like that's so interesting I I never I, I I think like this this was something that um I think was a little bit I wanted to mention a little bit towards the end but it's almost like um if y'all are sort of familiar with like trauma bonding like it's like oh you build community with folks because you're sort of going through like a lot of like the same like oppression repression or like violence um you know like state violence um through it and like w- with the don like you're saying like oh like you know if you come out to a friend like it's sort of like there's like a celebration like in that um but then with like documentation, like people like Loki don't know how to act. Like they're just like, do I say like I'm sorry? Like I'm what? Like ha- I'm half of like white supremacy. Like <laughs> you know, like uh, do you um, do you say like I I guess like a, a an interesting question is like how do you yeah like in that coming out moment like there are obviously like different contexts like if it's in the context of like safety like oh you're at a protest or something and it's like oh I'm not documented then like it's like okay well like you know like take care of yourself kind of thing um but I think that that's like a that's like an interesting point like what are ways to like respond to like um conversations around documentation that aren't just like pity or sadness or anger like I I know a lot of folks in the documented community like they talk about like 
um, and, and of course with the queer and trans community, like it is a lot of violence, it is a lot of like trauma, but it's also a lot of beauty. Um, and it's like a lot of joy as well. Um, and I wanted to give time to like talk about that. Like um, where, like for some folks, like especially with documentation, like there's just like this stigma that it's like, it, it's like an awful thing. And like folks need to have this race for citizenship and legal status. But um, do you think that, yeah, like what, what does it mean like we're, we're, like, what does it mean to have, like, that kind of community where it's not just focused on, like, the legal or, like, the sadness or frustration? Yeah, I feel like coming from someone who's um, not undocumented, um, what I feel like is the best you could do is, like, just make that person feel seen, you know? If anything, um, reassure them that, like, they have a community. You know what I mean? That the coming out scenario isn't as like, um, like crucial because it's like, oh yeah, like no big deal. Like I know hella people like that. You know what I mean? Unless it's in the context of safety, then it's like, oh, okay, well, what's up? Do you need help? Do you need resources? But I think that, you know, being in the queer community at that, being in the queer community and being POC, I think that's like your responsibility to like know what's up or at least know of other people who are out here existing, surviving um, of that same background or like of similar situations, you know, to to let's say you meet someone who's just coming to UC Santa Cruz and they come out to you as queer and then later you find out they're undocumented. You might not want to have that conversation, but you might want to point them in the direction of like where they could feel more at home, more like... Um, more comfortable around others, you know what I mean? Um, that's at least what I've learned, so. Yeah. Um, I think that, do I think? Um, there's, there, uh, like for me, fuck, this is my internet connection, so stay there. Maybe. Is it all good? Okay. Um, I find a lot of safety knowing that, like, there is community and solidarity and accomplices rather than allies um, and, like, people that I can count on. And, like, I know when I can count on someone, like, when... Like, for example, like, what the Adam was talking about, like, you know, like, showing up for that person, like, that's how I know I'm, like, I can trust you. Also, like, I don't know what I recommend for, like, folks that have that privilege of, like, being citizens in this country as country is <laughs> that, uh, like, I don't know, practice or, like, know about the know your rights um and like know how to step up when you know like some kind of enforcement is around like your homie um because like yeah a lot of the the responsibility to stay safe from xyc enforcement falls on undocumented people um so yeah that's like kind of solidarity you know like be like nah like that's my homie step away <laughs> and like it's just stuff like that. Um, but yeah, um, I don't know. There's a big community here in Santa Cruz, I feel. I've, like, way different from, because I come from, like, L.A., and, like, it's way, everyone's, like, very on their own. And, like, right here, it's very, like, like, we, we all know each other, especially the queer community is so tiny. Uh, so I feel like, I don't know. It's just... Yeah, it's a nice, it's a nice environment. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I think like, well, it's like funny because Mel um, shifted the PowerPoint um, to the demand. So it's like, ooh, praxis. Um, but yeah, I think like you, I think y'all like are hitting it like sort of like, um, 
I think one one thing y'all are mentioning is like understanding like your your privilege and like what like positions does that put you in and that um I think like with law enforcement um but it's also like just thinking about the privilege of citizenship or of like straightness and like how that really does affect like every little interaction and, and access to things. I think oftentimes like folks don't recognize, I, for me, like it wasn't until really recently that, for example, like I understood how documentation literally affects everything. <laughs> um, like your access to be able to, um, yeah, like like access anything. And um, I think like that's something that like I definitely took for granted until I started really thinking about that. Um, and then like for other folks, like it might be like the privilege of like being like, a man <laughs> or um, the privilege or of being like straight or hetero presenting um, like all of these things like um, and and like and also like I think like what's really important too is like you said like you sort of mentioned like allies like it's it's also like not just saying like oh I support but like genuinely like investing like um, like what does that mean to like actually stand in solidarity with queer, with trans, and with undocumented folks, and like as praxis, um, would be like listen to what their demands are, for example, um, which is like what we have here that you asked us to share was like um, that's like actually a way to stand in solidarity with folks of these communities rather than being like, I'm an ally. LGBTQIA, the A is for ally, <laughs> just really gross. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, we just have a, a few minutes left because we did want to open it up because um, there are folks on the call, which is really cool. Um, so we did want to open it up to comments and questions um, but I wanted to give y'all sort of like some time if like there are like some last things you wanted to like touch upon. Um, a question was like that we talked about too is like if there's an incoming student, um, like what advice would you give them about the queer, trans, and undocu community? I think Brie, you're like touching upon it a little bit, but if folks wanted to make some like wrap up statements. Well, I would be excited to meet more people. Um, it's always good to see new faces. Um, and I think that uh, Brie was right. Like, they're, the queer community here is, is, is pretty solid, you know? Um, I feel like people know each other, at least from the university. Um, so yeah, I think like a best way to be um, in solidarity with someone before they even know what solidarity is, right? Because you come here and you don't even know shit. Like, at least I didn't. I didn't know what anything was. Like, um, just be like, do you want to meet these people? Do you want to go to this action? Do you want to go to this event? Do you, you know, have you heard of this place? This place is having a food pantry right now. Do you know what a food pantry is? Things like that, where it's like, you know, you introduce them to the resources that it took you a little while to find. Um, and I think that's what's really going to progress, like, the communities to be more proactive. Because it took me, what, one, two years to adjust to, like, who I am and then where I fit in the community. So it's like, you kind of would love to give someone, like, a little bit of a boost and be like, here's where you find, like, people to talk to or, like, um, places to get food or, like, some you know just things like that um and then back on that like privilege thing I think that um something that's really important too is that like the same way that you would think about how in the LGBTQ like um human rights movement basically like the big thing was the marriage right um 
So you just think about that with like citizenship and then undocumented people. Like you have people that are like, we're chilling. We have marriage. Like I'm good. You know? Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but like, what about like, you know, trans people not even like freaking making a living wage. You know what I mean? Like they can't even access healthcare, you know, and things like that, where it's like the work is not done. So I think in the same sense, like thinking about people, um, you know, within your community and thinking about their people, um, you know, without documentation is just like, there's a lot of work to still be done there too. So, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, I just, okay, I wanted to make two points. One quick one is that like, there's also a lot of stigma around that, like, undocumentedness is only a, also like a lot of the conversations also revolve around DACA and, mm-hmm. um, so like the like, legality of it right and also like and not like DACA the cases in the Supreme Court so also how to be an, an accomplice mm-hmm. is by like reaching out to your homies even if they don't have DACA like mm-hmm. just reach out um see how you can support them whether it be like you know buying them maybe a meal or uh, I don't know having a talk with them just checking in see how they're doing um, and then the other thing about like incoming students <laughs> um, what I would tell them um, is that like there is from like resources and stuff, like there is lack of support for um, for undocumented communities. Um, there's definitely like a, a lot of work that programs on campus need to work on, uh, whether like the language they use um, and like how a lot of our stories are very tokenized um, and exploited for money. <laughs> um, so, yeah, um, yeah, there's a lot of, like, people trying to be the voice of the voiceless, um, so, yeah, um, and also, like, going back from, like, the event that we had, I know a lot of people mentioned, like, how both the Cantu Queer Center is, like, up in Merrill, very hidden, and the ARC, where EOP is at, it's, like, they're both in very like unaccessible locations. And I'm like, is that intentional question? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So yeah, like there is like, I don't know. I feel like these are very crucial things that should be, um, that should be in a place on campus where it's accessible, but also, yeah, UCSC is very unaccessible. So yeah, you should see as a whole yeah. is just like it's gonna take you the whole day to figure out, you know, you need to get this, yeah. this, this. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, I think that's an important component. Also, is like just being able to be transparent and be like, you know what? Like, I know where you could find that, but like, will you get your needs met? Like, I'm gonna be real with you. Like, mm, you know, like it depends who you talk to. Yeah. Um, and I feel like, especially with administration, like, people really do not care. <laughs> um, and, um, yeah, I feel like, I hope that incoming um, students are at least aware of, like, COLA and stuff, because I feel like that kind of is, like, listen, like, w- like, people will do all this, and administration is still, like, looking the other way. Like, so you can imagine when someone's, like, trying to get their, you know, like their financial aid or anything that they're not tripping on one single person you know if a protest at the at the base is not even being like you know given the right attention so yeah and like yeah administration you see why are brutal uh and that's how like the like the demands that you're seeing on the PowerPoint, that's what came to be. Like it's it's a result of like all of those years of like injustice that like 
the undocu community like the whole undocu community not just very specific groups like have experience on campus uh whether it be like food injustice housing injustice allowing ice on campus like that's something that the university does and like and like yeah and also like the university keeps like sending summons to undocumented students even in the middle of a pandemic um, and essentially what summon means is like you receive like xyc punishment for speaking up or standing up for you you know like just calling them out on their bullshit uh, mm -hmm. so yeah i don't know fun fact about ucsc uh, i mean also not trying to scare anyone but like just be aware that this is the reality of things it's not all like rainbows and unicorns and all of that like there's a lot of drama that goes yeah. into it <laughs> yeah i think with both of y'all like you're saying like the work is not finished mm -hmm. right it's really like the the community of folks coming together and recognizing that and acting upon that um that like progresses these things and like this is the support that folks have so I do appreciate y'all being like you know like transparent in that because I think that's like important too is that on any university like even though you have these services these resources and whatnot like it doesn't mean it's not difficult and it's not challenging um so yeah thank you again for that um so we have a little bit of time um, I do know that some folks um, mentioned that there was like some questions. Um, so we can either read the questions or if folks are even comfortable with um, like unmuting themselves and asking them, that'd be super great too. Uh, in the meantime, we're um, gonna have the stay connected with us um, information. Um, and just before we let go to questions or comments, I wanted to mention that um, we will hopefully um, edit and then post um, this ERC recording soon. Um, we're trying to make a YouTube, <laughs> so we'll see how that goes. But how are folks with any questions or comments? Wanted to give time for that. All right, so one of the questions asked by Sabrina is how can we better support our undocumented friends during this pandemic uh, where folks can't access on-campus resources? Um, good question. Um, um, because of capitalism, um, <laughs> A lot of it has to do with like having access to funds to whether it be groceries, rent, mm -hmm. <laughs> unfortunately. Um, yeah, like uh, reaching out to those students, um, also like reminding them that like there are programs here that have funds and other resources like select like support. Mm -hmm. um, like support has a bigger gap for undocumented students um so they they offer more funding um there's also eop um the undocumented student services we have a emergency funding uh, where students can uh, access those funds um and it's also um including like their families um uh, it can be for like their lawyers or, the, uh, or any like application fees. Um, yeah, I also do wanna say that undocumented student services also expands uh, its services to uh, folks who come from like mid status families or we have a, a lawyer well, we have like a partnership with the UC Davis um, Immigration Center. So we have like a fellow connected with us who helps 
um, students and their cases. So if you yourself are an undocumented, but like your immediate family is, um, those services can also expand to them and it's completely free. Uh, so yeah, just not a lot of people know about that. Uh, so yeah. And just also checking in with those people, like seeing see how they're doing. Um, I know it can be a rough time being home, especially with everything happening, like with politics and all, like there's a lot of like fear. So check, checking in. Yeah, I think just supporting one's mental health is like the biggest thing right now because, you know, a lot of people are, you know, this is brand new to a lot of people, but at the same time to a lot of other people, they've been dealing with, you know, the struggle for a very long time. Um, but I think that that also means that like, you know, people are coming out of the woodwork to kind of try to support just like um, when they started giving like meals out for like school children. Like there are little things like that uh, going on across but you just need to talk to the right people. Um, and as far as I can offer, I feel like if you hit up the can too, um, there's always going to be somebody to talk to. We have pro staff who's very attentive. Um, even if you just want to let them know your situation, you just want someone to talk to, they got you. Um, they're also hella knowledgeable and have a lot of networking. Um, so yeah, I think that's true to all the resource centers too, just depending on on which um, identity you feel uh, more comfortable with. But yeah. Sure. All right. Um, if there's any more questions or comments, um, if not, we're going to wrap it up. Oh, wait, just kidding. Um, yes. Thank you, Cameron, um, mentioned um, that I <laughs> actually am also trying to compile the different resources. So they, like the ERC is like trying to compile all the resources of the RCs together into one like active doc. Um, uh, so I think like, yeah, definitely um, be on the lookout for that for our resource guide. Um, but I think, like, a really good point, too, is, like, um, to take care of yourself and listen to yourself, like, COVID things are really overwhelming, like, I know for when we were programming this, like, we didn't necessarily want it to be, like, the center of the conversation, um, and then I think you mentioned, too, like, yeah, like, people have been struggling, you know, and so for some folks, like, adapting to a difficult situation is, like everyday life <laughs> um so yes uh there there are I think like to emphasize like there are definitely like resources on campus like there are folks that you can reach out and talk to um who are like empathetic and knowledgeable um and there are like resource lists but also to like check in with yourself take care with yourself check in with your homies um it's a difficult time in general. Um, and Adit said, I appreciate y'all. I appreciate you too, Adit. And thank you for coming on the call. <laughs> um, Be sure to check out our Been Here, Still Here campaign that comes out of Tracy's movement right there about the Cutie Pog. Um, we relaunched it to kind of, you know, show faces of our community because, you know, we all know each other, but it's like, let's <laughs> branch out a little bit. So yeah, keep an eye out for that. You can also submit to put your cute little selfie, put your artwork, you know, you can shout out uh, anything, your writing, any of that, we'll put it on our Instagram and we'll tag you and all that. So, okay, I think we're gonna wrap up. Um, but thank you so much for coming. We did it after having a Zoom scare in the beginning. <laughs> Um, so thank you so much. Um, shout out to Adan and Bree. Uh, shout out to Kaz for helping us, our tech crew. Um, Cameron for helping. Oh my gosh, Mel for hosting. 
for folks who came on the call too, thank you so much. This is so, um, so sweet. We were like, low key, if one person shows up, that's cool too. <laughs> um, so yeah, thank you everybody. Um, we hope to post the recording after we edit it really soon online. So um, head out for that. I think we're just gonna flash through some events coming through, but um, again, thank you so much. This was Solidarity, the ERC podcast. First episode done in the bag. <laughs> Yay.